seated in the house of the Lord. Oh my God. Hallelujah. God knows what we need. A day like this to just celebrate our Lord and King. Welcome to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Leo. Of course, I love being the pastor here at Bear Creek. We are a safe, inclusive faith community that's seeking and growing in Christ's love. We love showing that love to you. So I hope that you felt it as you walked in through those doors that you could feel the love of Christ. This is a love that we show by extending ourselves for the benefit of growing each other so that we can each other help not only that we grow in our spiritual development but we help you grow closer to the Lord as well. Please register your attendance. Let us know that you are here. Uh, if you registered when you came in, you can also register online. You can do that as well. We always want to stay in touch with you. If there's something going on during the week and you just need to reach out to us, please email us. Stay connected at bearcreekumc.org or you can always text us. You can text us. You can take a, a picture of this number right here anytime during the week. 832-773-4901. More people. You can take the picture of that. There you go. Take the picture of that one and I promise you we will be in touch with you. We want to walk along this journey with you. Never, never think that you are alone because you are not. God has blessed us to come together and we have had just a fantastic week. We started last Sunday with our Palm Sunday service kicking off Holy Week and my Lord we had the presence of God both Thursday and Friday. I pray that you enjoyed both of those services. Thank God again for our Chancellor Choir and all of you Friday night was just amazing. We left here speechless and we could not really say how much we love you guys and appreciate that. Can you give them a thank you today? Thank you so very much. Just an amazing time. As we gather here today, don't forget to put on your calendar as well. We have plenty of Bible studies for you, have plenty of things that you can do, but we always love putting on our calendar what we call our annual crawfish boil. I don't know if you guys knew that. I was from Louisiana. How many of you guys like crawfish? Yeah, it's usually about a 50-50 crowd on Easter. We'll have crawfish, and then we'll have other things for you as well. I pray that you can come and enjoy us May 19th. Write it down, May 19th as we celebrate and just have great fellowship 
that's what we love to do. Just love each other, celebrate Jesus Christ. Will you stand right now, please? Just stand with us, look around. There's maybe somebody you don't know. If you don't mind, introduce yourself to somebody. Get that name, give them your name. Please, please remain standing. We're going to proclaim what we believe together. As Christians, we're going to, together, we are going to read together our Apostles' Creed. This is what we believe as born-again Christians and how it is going to lead us. Affirmation of Faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Christ has risen indeed. Let us draw near with open hearts and open minds as we pray together. God of love and glory, your love for your children knows no boundaries. In Jesus Christ, your Son, you have gone the full distance, even into the shadows of death, to find us, redeem us, and bring us back to life. Fill our hearts with joyous praise, even as we still may struggle to see life in the midst of its own shadows so that as we proclaim your greatest good news this day, we may bring glory to you and new hope 
to your world. Lord of life, hear us as we lift to you our hopes and prayers for the church and the world. Let your grace empower us as people of faith to better serve you in the common places of our lives and in the people we meet on our faith journeys. Open our eyes to the living Christ as we pray for and work with the poor, the brokenhearted, the sick, and the bereaved. Hear our prayers for those who are close to our hearts. In your resurrecting power, lift them up and give them renewed strength and hope and give to us all new faith by which to live our days with you. Then truly our lives will be a living witness to your resurrection made whole by your love and care. Guide us, bless us, uplift us, and hold us, for we are your children called our purpose in your world. Hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor Christy. I'm going to ask Lupe to join me as we prepare to give today. I appreciate Lupe so very much. She always makes me look better. I appreciate all that she does and everything that she helps with us uh, here at the church as well. As I was thinking of whenever Pastor Christy was praying, we have a lot to celebrate. You uh, know that Jay went into the hospital uh, for a double bypass, and I want to tell you, he was smiling. Uh, yesterday, he's smiling. Can you believe that? I mean, just feeling good. So we got that to praise God about and continue to praise God uh, for uh, Pauline. I went to see her as well. Uh, just let's make sure Jean continue to pray for those individuals. As we celebrate what God is doing in our lives, there's so much, so much we're grateful for. Think about how the Lord is using each and every one of us, using Bear Creek United Methodist Church to touch lives here in our community. Thank God for our partnership with Mesa and all that God is doing through that ministry as well. Thank God for our children and our youth and all our adult ministries. You are wonderful. Let's continue to do what God has called us to do. We have an opportunity to give today in our Easter offering and just make a huge impact as we finish up this first quarter. I thank God for just an amazing, amazing time. Can you believe it's going to be April tomorrow? This time has just flown by. But look at the blessings. Look at what God has done. So whether you give online or you mail in your offering or you give today, know that God is blessing everything that you give. God is touching and God is multiplying and God is providing for us so that we can be a blessing to others. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just want to say thank you. So much to be grateful for. Our family, our friends, our church family, our community, the country we live in, God. Thank you so very much for what you are doing in our lives. We pray that you continue to put your loving arms around each and every one of us, God. Touch our hearts. Let today be a special day for every person, every person here, those that are, are present while uh, streaming, Lord Jesus, wherever you may be, know that God is reaching out and touching you today. Whatever the need is, I pray that God meets that need in your life. And bless these gifts that we're about to give. Multiply them, God, and make them what you would have them to be. Make an impact on this world so that everyone will know the risen Christ. We praise you and we thank you for it in your son Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so smile as you give today. Oh 
There we go. Our gospel reading this morning is John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she came running to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have put him. So Peter came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. Stooping down and looking in, he saw the linen cloths lying, yet he did not enter. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went inside the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the cloth that was around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but wrapped in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who came first to the tomb, went in also. He saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside at the tomb weeping. As she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have put him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you so much, Howard. I appreciate your reading. Choir, I appreciate you so much. I love that song. And uh, it just added with our trumpeters. uh, Did you enjoy Rudy and Charles? We appreciate you so very much. Thank you. Janet will be signing uh, for us today as well. Um, You can trust her. She's from Louisiana too, so she knows exactly what I'm saying when you don't. Since the death of my mom in February, the resurrection of Jesus has meant something different to me. Standing there at St. John's Cemetery, our family cemetery, right there by her grave, I remember thinking all that came to mind was the resurrection. And I could think of Paul's writing to the Thessalonians. We want you to know about people who have died so that you won't have to mourn like others who don't have hope. Since we believe that Jesus died and rose, so we also believe that God will bring with him those who have died in Jesus. If you and I believe in the resurrection of Jesus, then we also believe in the resurrection of our loved ones that have died in Christ. We believe also in our resurrection. Today we celebrate Christ is risen. Christ is is risen indeed. And so what does it mean to have confidence? What does it mean to have a celebration that exceeds grief? Where can you and I find such confidence and celebration? There's so much grief in our world today. No matter where you look, ranging from our personal losses to societal issues of injustice, of poverty, of conflict, all over the world. It seems that we're always grieving something. So how does Jesus' actions, this last 
week of the passion, the last week of his life and ministry affect our grieving. Last week we started with our king entering Jerusalem. It was beautiful to see the kids waving their palm leaves and, and all of us with our palm branches. But by Good Friday, the king is dead. He's dead. And there's grief. Joseph of Arimathea, a secret follower of Jesus for fear of the religious authorities, took the body of Jesus with the permission of Pilate. And he was joined by Nicodemus. Now Nicodemus showing himself, who brought about a hundred pounds of myrrh and alloys, a mixture of these spices, so that they could wrap the body of Jesus. And they wrapped the body of Jesus in linen cloths with these spices and placed his body in a brand new tomb that no one had ever laid. Just a reminder, earlier that day, we were reminded on Good Friday that there was an expression of grief while still on the cross. About three in the afternoon, Matthew records, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus' cry of anguish from the cross is a quote from Psalm 22. In the common English Bible, Jesus' words are, my God, my God, why have you left me all alone why are you so far from delivering me and from my roaring words of distress while traditionally this is interpreted as a relational separation between Jesus and his father Clarissa Quinn PhD and a good friend author of the arrival of the king the shape and story of Psalm 15 through 24 explains this is not a relation this is not about a relational separation this is about distance distance from the comforting presence of his father the words the psalmist used are please don't be far from me it's the distance from the presence of God. Are you feeling any distance today? Because it is the distance from the presence of God that intensified Jesus' anguish and agony as he bore the sins, the whole weight of humanity's sins on the cross. Quinn writes, quote, when we read in dialogue the parallel between Psalm 17 and Psalm 22, it increases, it expresses grief beyond imagination. And yet, confidence, confidence and praise that exceeds grief. Quinn suggests that we should not understand Jesus as just quoting one verse from Psalm 22, but that Jesus was referring to the entire Psalm. Matter of fact, she goes further and says, as other scholars write, Psalm 22 is part of a collection and includes Psalm 15 through 24, forming a chiastic structure with Psalm 19 right in the middle at the center and with connections between these paired Psalm 15 and 24 when you get a chance to read it. 16 and 23, 17 and 22, and 18, 20, and 21. The psalmist, and therefore Jesus, expresses a confidence and a praise in Psalm 16, verse 6 through 9. Listen what it says. It says, that's my that's why my heart celebrates. Can you see Jesus saying that? That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. My whole body, my whole body rests in safety knowing, knowing 
that you won't abandon my life to the grave. I need you to have that kind of confidence and celebration now, knowing that your body will not be abandoned to the grave, that as Jesus said, you won't let your faithful follower see the pit. And then get verse 11 here. You teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Today is a day of celebration because beautiful things are always at your right hand, he says. Even in the midst of this feeling of distance, Jesus remained confident. Jesus remained confident in his Father, and he celebrates as he even goes into the grave for three days and three nights. But there's more. The confidence and praise exceeds the grief is tied to God's presence. The two Psalms, at the beginning and the end, 15 and 24, they both begin and start with this question. Who can enter God's presence? Who can enter God's presence? That's what this is all about. Jesus coming. This is why he came. Remember the words, in your presence is total celebration. At the conclusion of this collection of Psalm in Psalm 24, it is the glorious king. It is the king of glory, the same king that entered Jerusalem is the only one that can enter God's presence. The only one. And so this collection starts with a question. It also ends with a question. Who is this king? Who is this glorious king? Who is this person that can enter into the presence of God when no one else can? The Lord of heavenly forces. He's the glorious king. He's the same one that Pilate wrote to his friend Seneca and declared his entrance into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, if he had any intention of raising the populace, was a failure. This same Jesus that Pilate declared a failure three days later got up out of the grave. He got up victorious. And I can say it again, Christ is risen and you say? He is risen indeed. You better know it. You better know it. Greet with fear and, and, and greet with sorrow for three days. Jesus' followers stayed hidden. But on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, there was a strength, there was a confidence that they had. They ran to the grave. And I love this. You saw who ran to the grave? Just got to give the women a, you know, their due. It was the women that ran to the grave. And the men supposed to say amen at this time, you know. And they found this heavy door, this stone rolled away, that the grave was empty, except for Jesus' grave clothes. And then John recorded. John recorded that Mary saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said, woman, why are you weeping? <laughs> Why are you sad? And what is it that makes you sad about today? And then Jesus says it again in verse 15. Woman, why are you weeping? <laughs> this is not the day to weep. The psalmist says in, in, in Psalm 30, verse 5, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, I don't know what all happened during the night, but whatever was happening during the night, something different happened in the morning. Are you with me here? 
The answer is, Jesus brings us into the presence of God, and that makes all the difference. Peter wrote, Christ himself suffered on the account of our sins once for all, the righteous one for the unrighteous. He did this, get this now, get this. This is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. He did this in order to bring you, each one of you, into the presence of God. Today we get to experience the presence of God because God has made it possible through Jesus to bring you. That was the goal all the time, to bring you into the presence of God. You may think yourself unworthy to be in the presence of God, but Jesus makes it possible for even you to be in the presence of God. Christ was put to death as a human being but made alive in the spirit, Peter says. That's what resurrection is all about today. Don't take it for granted. The confidence and the celebration that exceeds grief is here today. I don't know what kind of grief you may be experiencing, but Jesus wants you to experience the confidence and the celebration that exceeds that grief. Stephanie Erickson, the author of Companion Through Darkness, she defines grief as a tidal wave. You ever feel that? As a tidal wave that takes over you, it smashes you down upon the imaginable, with imaginable force, sweeps you into darkness where you tumble and crash. And then it throws you out into an unknown beach where you're bruised and reshaped. She goes on to say this, quote, grief will make a new person out of you if it doesn't kill you in the making. Eugene Peterson paraphrases Psalm 15, verse 1, that invitation this way. He says, God, who gets invited to dinner to your place? <laughs> Anybody want to sit down with God? How do we get on your guest list? How does one get to this place of confidence and celebration that exceeds the grief that we feel from the distance that sometimes we feel from God? Jesus wants to bring you into the presence of God. It is that presence that will give you exactly what you need. Let me conclude with Psalm 24, verse 7b through 10. So the glorious king can enter. Who is this glorious king? The Lord, strong and powerful. The Lord, powerful in battle. Mighty gates, lift up your heads. Ancient doors, rise up high so the glorious king can enter. And who is this glorious king? Your friend, my friend, our Lord, our Savior, our King, the Lord of heavenly hosts. He is the glorious king. Enter into the presence of God this Easter. It is Christ the King that makes it possible. Christ is risen. Christ is indeed. Christ is indeed risen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, thank you so very much for allowing us to enter your presence and inviting us to have dinner with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is a preview for you. The Lord's table has been set. And Christ the King has made it possible for you to be in the presence of God. Will you stand by faith and receive of the body and blood of Christ this feast that has been prepared for us 
by our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Everyone, everyone, because of what Christ has done, everyone is welcome at this table. We always like to begin with a prayer of confession and pardon. Will you pray this prayer with me? Let's pray together, everyone. Merciful God, Let's spend about 60 seconds in silence. I want you to think about your week. What is that that you would like to praise God for? Or maybe confess something that you did that you shouldn't have done, something that you didn't do that you should have done. Spend some time in meditation. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, each of you, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you, you are, are forgiven. forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Lord, be with us. And, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Give up, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God, power and might, heaven and earth, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in the remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ has risen, Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. 
by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Will you pray with me the prayer that he taught his first disciples? Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I'm gonna ask our service to come forward. We will be receiving communion by intention today. We invite you to come. Everyone is welcome. We have gluten-free and a few personal ones if you need the little personal packets as well. The usher will lead you from the back. We ask that you come. As you receive the body of Christ, you can say thank you, praise God, hallelujah, amen. And then as you're presented with the cup, just dip your bread so lightly into the cup. As they say, this is the blood of Christ. And you can receive by saying amen, praise God, thank you, amen. Come and receive the body of blood of Christ for your redemption. It is God's grace that you're receiving, and it will give you strength in your spirit, your soul, and your body. By faith, receive God's grace today in the presence of God.
Let us pray the prayer after receiving together. Eternal God, we give you thanks. For this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you don't have a church home, we would invite you to make Bear Creek United Methodist Church your church home. I would love to be your pastor. This is a great place where you can grow and you can continue to meet people so that you will never, ever feel alone. This is a great place to grow in your relationship with God and with one another. You can text me or just let me know, 832-773-4901. If you want to come up today, you're welcome to come up, and we'll welcome you with loving arms as well. Please stand as we sing together this hymn of invitation. Let us continue this Easter celebration by singing He Lives, hymn 310, and we will sing all verses. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know he is a living, whatever foes may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. With me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to him. I see his loving care, and though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to him. Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He remain standing. I tell you what, I feel the Lord in my heart and very much alive. What about you? It feels so good to know that God it lives within us through Jesus Christ. We're going to sing some more as we prepare to leave here today. I'm just, I'm just excited all of you are standing because I love to hear 
you sing with us. That, that wasn't me, that last, I had my mouth open like that, but that was Sean, I mean, uh, Zach. <laughs> that was Zach, but it felt good while he was, I just did that, it felt good. So if you have to sing like that, that's okay, but let's sing together. Thank you. 